<laughs> hey guys. Okay, so this video is gonna be short and sweet. I've basically been living with a water situation, a drip, a leak, a lack of filtration for like three weeks now. And it's been too cold for me to really deal with it, but now we finally got a moderately sunny day and the temperature's not crazy cold. So now, today is my day to deal with it. What I had going on was two things. One is this big blue filter right here, one filter, two filter. It had a leak on the far side here which was dripping down. I had a towel and a uh, cookie tray, cookie pan thing, cookie sheet, catching all of the water and dumping it into this white bucket. I had to empty, em you know, do that about once a day, which is a pain in the butt. It worked, but you know, having a slow leak is never fun. And unfortunately, because of the way my plumbing has these PEX fittings, you know, once these things are mounted in here, they're mounted in here and you can't just loosen something and take it off and fix it. You have to cut PEX which is what you can see I've done here. I've cut it, I've unscrewed the big blue filter. I'm about to unmount this from the white metal mounting bracket. And then I'm gonna take it and basically put some more, um, what do you call it? The plumber's tape, Teflon tape um, around that and tighten it back down on the other side here and hopefully that fixed the leak. But even more important than the leak was I had another brand of UV filter down here and the electronics on it, you know, it had an external AC adapter that plugged in up here to this um, outlet. And it kept blowing, it kept failing. And the company was nice, they shipped me a whole new unit. It was a Chinese, you know, relatively cheap Chinese UV filter. Uh, the filter itself was fine. The UV light itself was fine. It's the external AC adapter. I don't know if the, you know, the, my power supply was inconsistent or if it was just cheaply made, but it failed after about three weeks and it was throwing a fault light. And then as soon as I unplugged it and plugged it back in, it made a weird popping sound and the fault light wouldn't even come back on. So it was dead as a doornail. So they shipped me out the new one and basically the exact same thing happened after about two weeks. And I didn't know it, that it had failed and I was drinking unfiltered water, not completely unfiltered, but it wasn't doing the final stage of UV filtering. So I got tired of that. I, ha I requested a refund and they were happy enough to provide me with a full refund. So I do appreciate that. But now I've got this HQUA version. It is remarkably similar in style and design, but I'm hoping that the electronics and the AC adapter um, work a little bit better. And it does seem to be more well-built. The previous model had a very lightweight adapter, almost no weight to it at all. Like it was very little components inside the AC box itself. Um, that this, the one that goes with this guy is a little bit more substantial. So after many weeks of delay, I'm finally, I cut this. I am going to hook up the, the new PEX tubing to this. But before I do that, I decided to go ahead and tackle my leak issue and solve both problems today since I've, you know, got all the tools out and I'm cutting the PEX and doing all that, you know, similar kind of work. So that's it. Just wanted to tell you about this project. I'm taking some pictures as I go. And once I get it done and wrapped up, if I learned anything and it's all working, I'll shoot it another section and uh, let you know how it goes. All right. Rolling. Mm -hmm. Hi there. Okay, so I'm done for the day with the plumbing. Let me give you a quick update. I think I solved the problem. Won't know for sure for a while. So I fixed the leak on the left side of this filter. Great. But now it's leaking from the right side. Although it did the first time I fired up this, pressurized this whole system. But then the leak slowed down and eventually stopped. And now it's been about an hour and I'm noticing that this leak right here where this white fitting meets this black plastic housing, it's also slowing down. So I'm just gonna let it drip. I've got a towel down here to catch the occasional drip. It's about one drop now every five minutes at this point, not a huge deal. Although I found out from looking at this towel that I've got mice coming in here and chewing the heck out of the towel. They've eaten through work gloves. They've eaten through cloth. Um, they're just really, I don't know if they're using it for nesting material somewhere else. I don't see any mouse poop or any evidence of the mice, but they must be here because they were eating this towel and another towel that I had in here before. 
anyway not a huge deal um, and then as far as the plumbing I put another ball valve in here so I could isolate this it wasn't there before I'm not thrilled with my plumbing job I've got no leaks in this pack so I basically from here all the way up through here to here <laughs> this fitting that all had to be replaced and, and run new and the nice thing about this half inch blue PEX line is there's a lot of flex to it. However, things are sort of floating in here and it not blocked and braced. So I was actually really surprised that there's no leaks in it. I'm just gonna let it live like this for maybe a week. And then I'm gonna come back in and, and try to add some blocking and some bracing, maybe some strapping to keep, you know, things like these ball valves from, from moving at all. But um, the bottom line is, I think I've solved my UV issue. I've got this guy plugged in. Here's a little ballast unit kind of tacked up temporarily here. And it's plugged into this outlet up here. Now, I will, let me mention the electricity for a moment. On my sub panel that feeds both my tiny house and the shed, power was coming in from my solar system and my inverter to that sub panel and like many sub panels it has sort of a a bus a and a bus b like two bars that kind of um, ride above one another and breakers when you take circuit breakers they could either be plugged into one bus bar or the other unless of course you have a double pole circuit breaker and then that would bridge the two but what I found out a couple of months ago is that only one of those bus bars was hot. The other one was not. I thought my double pole breaker was actually feeding the second bus bar, but it was not. And I was getting a lot of flicker for the last couple months here on my lights in the tiny house. Uh, but everything was operating normally. My laptops were fine. The routers were fine. Anything with sensitive electronics seemed to be fine but there was no denying that I was getting a lot of flicker on the lights. And it, I started to wonder if maybe some strange thing with oscillation of the, you know, 60 Hertz um, power was maybe causing burnout on these ballast units. So I think I've solved that. I've taken a jumper now. I could show you, but I'd rather just talk about it. <laughs> um, I've taken a jumper to go from one bus bar to the other bus bar. Um, just a little pigtail piece of wire that connects the two. So now both bus bars are hot. I'm not counting on a double pole circuit breaker to bridge those two bus bars. Then I went back inside the house and turned on the lights that had been flickering and they're no longer flickering. So I'm hoping that helped the situation and maybe that'll help this ballast to last longer. So I'm gonna give it a couple of few weeks and see if this thing, I'm gonna check it every day because if it does start to fault out, I won't know unless I come in and look at it. And if it's faulting and not turning on the UV bulb that is inside the silver canister, that means it wouldn't be, you know, cleaning the water, it wouldn't be killing bacteria and viruses, and I'd be drinking the water without knowing it. So I'm going to check it every day. I was drinking it like that before for a few days, and it didn't give me any stomach problems. So it's not the end of the world, but I would like for the UV filter to be working at all times just for a little extra insurance, all right? So I'm gonna wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have an off-grid homestead and you need to do some water filtering, I recommend a multi-stage filtration system like this. And I definitely recommend a UV filter just to be safe if you're drinking you know, rainwater, basically. Um, that's it, hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next video, bye.